Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, I must admit, I've been beating myself up a little this week. I'm an optimistic guy, and by that, I mean I'm a not only a glass half full, but a glass overflowing guy. <laughs> but after writing a negative CES article this week, I thought to myself, Neil... Are you getting a little grumpy old man syndrome? Are you letting that kick in? Let's be honest, being angry or grumpy when you're young is kind of cool because it makes you interesting. But as you get older, you are toxic, miserable, grumpy. (laughs) But thankfully, I read an article today on the BBC technology page about CES. It was a report there getting everybody's tweets from everybody attending the event. And the headline of that article was, I feel my sanity draining away. (laughs) So I think maybe it's not me after all. And actually, people are just tired of gimmicks and solutions that are looking for a problem. They want something that is useful and solves real problems and real pain points in their lives or in business. But it is time to restore the balance in the universe a little bit. So before we leave CES, I wanted to leave the event on a positive note. So here's the pitch. We are all content creators now. Whether you're recording something for Insta Stories, Snapchat, your holiday video when you go away on vacation, life logging, blogging, vlogging, or just podcasts. That phone in your pocket is so powerful. It's got a glorious HD camera. But one thing that has not changed over the last 10 years is the sound recorded from the video on your smartphone. Let's be honest, it's still awful. Any amount of wind just makes it unlistenable when you play it back on your TV or on your phone. But what if you had a small black box that would act as a wireless microphone and give all of your videos that you record from your phone studio quality audio? I thought I'd get your attention with that one. (laughs) So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Las Vegas one last time where we're going to speak with Philip Sonleitner from Mike Me, who's left the show floor at CES to come spend a few minutes with us and tell us all about Mike Me. So a massive warm welcome back to the show. I can't believe it's nearly a year since we last spoke, but for people, yeah. that, for people that are just tuning in and hearing your voice for the very first time, can you just tell them a little bit more about your role and exactly what Mike Me is? Yeah, uh, thanks for inviting me, Neil. Um, yeah, my name is Philip Sonleitner. I'm the CEO of Mike Me, a startup from Austria, Vienna. And we are basically in the space of uh, audio recording, content creation, uh, stuff like that. And we are maker of the Micro microphone, which is our first hardware product. So we've been around for quite a while. So I started this company, or basically the project, uh, a couple of years back. And we did a, a successful crowdfunding campaign in 2015. And since a year, roughly a year, we are on the market now. And the first product is the MicMe microphone. So basically, it's a, a small black box. Uh, which features a studio-grade microphone, so with a really uh, nice capsule. It records a uh, very high-end sound, and the uh, tech and the capsule, which is in the microphone, is normally only found in like very expensive studio-grade microphones. But obviously, those microphones need a microphone cables. You need a sound card or an audio recorder. So it's all those things are not made for mobile usage. So the idea behind MicMe is how one can create, so capture, create, um, produce high quality content, with content I mean audio and video, and then publish and produce it basically on the go and share it right away. So so maintaining high quality, but at the same time uh, getting very fast um, time to market for your production of content. So that might sound very complicated, but it's actually quite easy. So my company is a, a a small box is a set with one big button on top of it. So you just push the button and the microphone records on its internal disk. So it has a built-in 16 gigabyte storage. It records in very high quality, as I said, 24 bit up to 96 kilohertz for all the nerds out there. Um, so it's basically a self-contained audio recorder. That's the first thing it can do. The second thing is, and that's actually quite new, uh, it be- I'm a USB microphone, so you hear me now calling over Skype with Neil with the micro microphone. 
So if you plug it into your computer, it becomes a USB microphone. And the third usage is basically the, the most innovative. So it has a wireless connection to your phone. So if you have the MicMe app installed on your iPhone, for example, um, you can transmit the audio from the micro microphone more or less in real time over Bluetooth to your phone. So that's basically where we are in that space, in that use case with a lot of patents, but how you can transmit over Bluetooth that high quality. So that's uh, technically uh, quite complicated. Um, yeah, th this is what MicMe basically is. So it's a combination of three things, an audio recorder, a USB microphone, and a wireless microphone for your smartphone. And the app gives you another, a, a lot of other options. So you can either just record audio from the microphone wirelessly or video, you can remote control it. Um, so with video, I mean you record video with a smartphone, but the audio comes from the microphone, which is a huge thing because if you just record video and audio with your smartphone and you move a little bit further away from your from your sound source, like your speaker, if you're in a convention, like I'm now at the CS, where it's quite noisy, then normally audio gets really, really bad. So you need to make sure that the audio can be captured close to my mouth or to the speaker, whereas the video should be recorded a little bit further away to get a better picture. So we basically can solve that issue. Well, that, that's not a short, but a good overview of Mike Me. Fantastic. And when we last spoke, you very kindly sent me one. And I must admit, the sound that comes from this is fantastic, especially because we're at CES at the moment. Everyone's going crazy about the latest smartphones. And each year, the smartphones get bigger and the cameras get much, much better. And everybody's vlogging from their phones. Great. Everything looks great. But the sound that records from these are atrocious. And the first thing that I noticed is when you, when you sent me this, one, I didn't have to carry a big microphone around in my kit bag all day, and I had a microphone that I could fit pretty much in my pocket. I mean, I'll put a video on the website so people can see the size of this, but you sound incredible on this podcast right now. And I think it'll just help put listeners into perspective just how powerful this tiny little black box is and how portable it is. But, I mean, what's been happening since we last spoke at Mike Me? So a lot actually. So we launched in uh, end of 2017. We launched so December 2017. We launched Mike Me, um, and before that we already had like 2,000 customers from uh, the Indiegogo campaign. So since then, so we now have a couple of thousand people using the Mike Me and became our customers. So basically, there's more than let's say 12 months of experience. And as everybody more or less knows, so this is a first generation product, meaning. Um, um, it's our first hardware product. There's a lot of software coming along with it, or a lot of, a lot of possibilities. So we learned really a, a ton of stuff in the last year about how to do things, how to not do things. That's also a very important lesson. Uh, what what should we change, what not, which direction we could should go? Because there's like a, a lot of different use cases we could um, uh, deliver to or fulfill, as you said. Uh, it's a tiny device, um, but as we are a small company, so currently we are nine persons in Mike Me, the question is which use case, or you know, you normally choose like some use cases uh, and then you focus on them. So that was the the last year. So we learned a lot from customers. Two things were so when we last spoke, we had a, like an old iOS app where the user interface was far from being ideal. So a lot of people complained about the user interface that's hard to use. So we completely rewrote the app from user experience point of view. At the same time, we made the app more stable and a better foundation for future features because we won't stop there. So that's number one. Uh, the second point is the, the most requested feature from customers was basically a USB microphone. Because when we initially launched, it basically was just a, a, um, a audio recorder and a wireless microphone. So we then implemented the mode where if you connect it to your computer, it basically becomes a, a standard USB microphone, which is quite cool for Skype calls, uh, conference calls, or if you are um, making a voiceover, recording a webinar with your computer, if you do video stuff or record just music in your normal audio application. So it becomes much more versatile. So those have been the two big updates. And the third one is basically that a lot of people wanted a, a, a more um, affordable version. Let's call it that way. Yeah. So um, we're now shipping the MicMe Silver, which is basically looks the same, but it features a smaller capsule, still a great one with um, a condenser capsule, 
and less memory. So the top version has 16 gigabyte storage and the, the entry level version has, has four gigabyte storage and it starts at 219 euros, which is a quite um, good pricing. Um, well, so this was more or less with some other software updates um, the last year. We tried to, to, to spread out uh, to more dealers uh, and spread the word, but we have worked heavily uh, on those three things. And then we also started already a lot on future stuff. And you did mention a few moments ago, of course, you were in CES at the moment. I've dragged you off that show floor, hence why it's so quiet. But, I mean, where is your boot and what is the secret to getting your voice heard at CES? So I decided, or we decided actually to not have a booth this time. Yeah. Um, we had a couple of times a CES booth already, but it, it's super loud at the CES. So it's kind of hard to... Uh, demonstrate. I mean, on one side, it's a good demonstration space because you hear the quality of the microphone, but sometimes it's so noisy that even with headphones, you it's hard to demonstrate. And the second thing is there's like a really, really tough competition going on. So I guess it's about 180 or 200,000 visitors. Uh, there's, I think, two, two to 5,000 companies exhibiting at the CES. It's really, really hard to get pushed through. So this time we did a little bit of a different approach. So we're meeting persons directly um, and don't focus too much on meeting a ton of end customers because as a startup, you know, we don't have a team of uh, five people. So it's just me. Um, so we need, we need to try to, to, to meet as much media as possible and influencers and uh, talk to them directly outside where it's a little bit better to discuss and show off like me. But Getting through at CES is, you know, hard because you compete with uh, Samsung, LGs and stuff like that. So, and there's 2,000 other startups fighting the space. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's quite crazy. So CES is quite crazy. So what kind of feedback have you been getting there? So basically what you just said. So um, when we show the mic meet to, um, to people and they say like, wow, wow, that's great because it helps so much um, that audio is a little bit... Um, left behind as you just mentioned a couple of uh, moments ago so a lot of people focus a lot on video and um, forget that 50 percent of the experience if you look at content and videos is audio and if, if, if your audio is not good enough then people will switch away from your content and will stop viewing your videos or listening to your podcasts so you need really to get good audio um because right now, I guess, in a podcast, it's quite cool. But let's say I, I, I move my, my microphone away. So let's, uh, let, let's just try. Talk like that so the microphone is not far away. Yeah. Most probably, the most probably quality was quite bad because the microphone was a meter away now. So uh, that's just a small example that people completely forget about audio. So that's the feedback. Uh, so a lot of media guys and video makers, they know that already. But the broader audience don't know that. So our goal here is to now spread the word and then get uh, a mic me in front of a lot of people. Because the solution, the product is quite nice, but we need to you know, reach a broader audience. Now, I am hearing more and more now that audio is going to be huge in 2019. And there's so many creative bloggers and vloggers in the world now. So do you think it's, this represents a great opportunity for Mike Me? Yeah, I, I think so. Just a couple of days, there was a great, um, great, great quote by Mark Anderson saying uh, audio is going to be uh, titanically important. So there's two predictions for 2019 where audio is going to be huge and uh, VR is going to be still huge. Um, so I, I'd love to hear that, that in, you know, from investment side, that audio gets more and more um, a bigger focus on audio that might have to do with, you know, all the wireless in your headsets all the content being made, um, I guess smart speakers and assistants are a big, big part of it. Yeah. Now with smart speakers and assistants, which are all voice enabled, people get a, even the, the consumers get a better sense of you know how much stuff you could do with your voice and audio. And I still believe that um, speaking and talking is the biggest uh, communication channel in the world. It's not chat. It's not uh, uh, anything else. It's more or less. I mean, we're still sp speaking to each other. And then audio is, is a big part of that. And good quality audio is, is important because then you can bring across your message better. You're be, being better heard. I mean, that sounds so easy, 
but a lot of people forget about it. So if you're a lot on conference calls, you know that, you know, uh, if, if the audio quality uh, is going down, everyone is super annoyed, same with videos. Yeah. So we try to help there in that space. So I appreciate at CES, you're probably in back-to-back -back meetings all the time and incredibly busy, but is there any tech that has excited you that you've sneaked off and had a little look or anything that's caught your eye while you've been out there? I think, so I've been just around for a day. So there's like uh, one of the, I mean, if you get to ever to CES, so the, the first big thing you're going to see in the, in the convention center is you go to the LG booth and have like a massive wall. I think they call it the, the nature curve display wall or something like that. There's like hundreds of uh, displays. So around displays stitched together for a massive, I don't know, 15 or 20 meter square, 10 meter display wall, which is quite, quite amazing. And then I have this rollable TV, so which unfolds itself, um, which is quite funny. I don't know if, if I ever need that, but it's all, I mean, CES is showing off um, the future. So it's, it's a good place to see where things are going. This displays are obviously big. Um, so automotive is quite big, all the autonomous um, driving yeah. cars. I've not been to the audio guys yet. So I don't know. I've just heard some stuff from, from, from my colleagues and my friends here. Um, yeah, it, it's a nice place. It's quite crazy, but I've not heard something which is super, uh, super new for audio stuff. I mean, that's ordinary stuff. We're getting better speakers, louder speakers, cooler design, stuff like that. Uh, a million different connected devices to all the assistants. That's it. And then there's a super yacht. So the first time for ever, there's a, a yacht. So a yacht. Yeah. In the middle of the show booth, uh, <laughs> exhibiting for, I don't know, 25 meter big thing. The middle of the booth which is quite strange, so quite big product. Uh, so that, yeah. <laughs> Certainly gets them noticed, I would imagine. And we yeah, it's true. And we often hear, you know, about the chaos and the craziness of CES. But what I'm, I'm kind of curious about as well is what happens post CES when you get back home exhausted you have a pile of business cards and uh, leads etc to go through what happens there is it just beginning when you get when you leave the show kind of so for me I mean I see CES as a you know it's always good to meet people personally first or at least once yeah because then you have a better connection and you you, you have seen at least the other person once and then afterwards so the tough part afterwards is if you get back home so basically you lost a full week of of your daily business um so you try to catch up on cs but if you're on cs you try to make most of cs and not of the daily business at home so getting speed up there and making all the follow-ups so sometimes you make really good new um, connections and leads um, but then catching up um, with everybody because all the others are also super busy is kind of tough but uh, i mean that's the that's regular business um and then also you see that much things at ces that it's kind of overwhelming and as i said exhausting so you need to make sure not losing your mind at ces <laughs> then every evening there's a party and you you meet some 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 friends uh so basically it's a 15 hour working day uh, it's still a lot of fun, um, but, you know, if you get home, you get back to regular business and then try to make most of those connections you just made. So that's all cool. Fantastic. So <laughs> is, it, is there any other news that, uh, with Mike Me that you can share with us before, uh, you know, before you go and your plans for 2019? Yeah, there, there's a backpack next, right next to me with, uh, filled up with a lot of stuff in it, so which will come out in 2019. Nothing I really can share public yet, but um, we're working a lot uh, on different things, on the softer side and on, on the harder side. Maybe just a small sport softer side. So one thing a lot of people ask for is um, how to set the gain in the microphone. The gain is basically the, the sensitivity about how loud or how silent your signal is. And that's currently done manually. I'm working on an automatic gain, uh, which runs in the mic me and the app all the time. So that you don't, in most cases, you don't have to set the gain any longer. You could manually set it, but by default in the future, it will be automatically. So that's uh, pretty close to release in the next uh, two months, hopefully. Um, there's a lot of other updates coming in the on the app side. Uh, we'll introduce um, one, one or two new products. 
this year. Um, and that's all based on, on user feedback, especially on the hardware side, we're seeing them. And then the third or second question is always if we couldn't change the form factor a bit. So that's that's already enough. So watch out for Mike Me. Uh, mid-2019, there's a huge release coming up. I do love a good teaser. We need to get you back on in six <laughs> months, don't we? <laughs> but before I let you go, can I just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find any information about Mike Me, see some videos of it in action, and maybe even reach out to you guys if they've got any questions. Yeah, basically it's all on uh, mikeme.com, so M-I-K-M-E.com. Or just head over to Google and search for my, for the micro microphone, and all information is there. You can buy it online. If you have questions, just hit the chat button below, and um, yeah, get in touch if you have any questions. And I would love to get some um, new feedback from people and see what they can create with Mike Me. So it's basically yeah, for all the content creators out there, podcaster, musician, video makers. If you make a Skype call, whatever you do with audio. Uh, make me more or less as you covered and it really does just that especially for people listening that are not necessarily creatives that want to improve their holiday videos because i took mine on holiday with me as well and the difference between just a, a little holiday video that you film by a pool compared to filming by the pool with your phone and this little <laughs> tiny black box is phenomenal is yeah and most probably the, the sound is the difference so if you yeah. just go if you're at the, the seaside and if you i just recorded once putting the microphone pretty close to the water yeah. so if you have this you know this water sprinkling um so you the phone is just too far away and it doesn't get it's made for speech the phone yeah. so it makes a huge difference because then sometimes you feel you're being like in a big movie theater because in movies sound is always recorded quite close um uh, and then you could really hear uh the, the real sound so it's a it's basically also something for, 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 for consumers. So if you're ambitious on your holiday videos, as I said, just check out Mike Me, uh, MikeMe.com. Fantastic. Well, I promise we won't leave it a year or more until we speak again. Let's get you back <laughs> yeah, on yeah. in six months. But more than anything, just a big thank you for coming off that show floor and speaking with me today. I appreciate it. Okay, it was a great talk to you. Thanks. Philip's audio was recorded using Mike Me, And I've used it at conferences and I have it in my kit bag. And its performance really blew me away. And it just made me realize how you get used to just poor recorded audio from your smartphone. So I'll add the videos to the show notes over on my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. So you can just see it working in action. But I'm really curious if you can let me know your thoughts on it. Have you even thought about um, audio quality recording on your videos from your smartphone? Maybe it's something you've not even thought about before. But that's it for today's episode and our time at CES. And time for me to read relax a little bit and recharge my mojo. <laughs> but as always, my door is open to each and every one of you. If you want to share your passion for technology or your w- discuss what you heard today or just have a moan about CES2, whatever it is, pull up a seat. I'm the guy at the end of the bar and you can reach me at techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter and Instagram, nice and easy, at Neil C. Hughes. But that's it. So I'll return tomorrow for another great guest. If I don't hear from you before, have a fantastic weekend. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.